which maybe about six years ago. Yeah. And then we, we kind of like reconnected through our mutual friend, Detroit Farmer, yeah. uh, maybe like three or four years ago. So, so it's been a great ride. It's and been I a ride. Yeah. I do have to hold See, this guy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am. So I love your BTS, go. but I got a picture to make. All right, <laughs> let's go. Thank you guys. My name is Joe Bon. I'm the first assistant director on Deadly Reunion. You'll be on your right, Monica will be on your left. So Monica, let's actually start you here. We'll actually start you ahead. I know it's not how you did it before, but we'll start you ahead just for safety sake and, and doing this. Okay. So guys, real half speed. Here's the action. We walk in. So Chucky, you're with them, you're with them. And then Chucky will come into here. So let's just pick it up right there, guys, because it gets clustered in that top end. So Chucky, this is your one. Uh, Stu, let's have you on the to right. Jill, let's tell you on the left. This is where you're going to end up. I want to clean this up a little bit. So, Stu, you're on the right of the camera. Okay. There we go. So then we start going through the stuff like you guys do. So go ahead and go through the stuff. How did you get attached to the project, Joe? Uh, Joe Karam, who is one of the actors, he plays Bobby. He was in negotiations to come on to the project. And uh, we'd worked together once before. And he wanted to make sure that if he was going to be a part of it, he wanted it to be ran really well from an on-set perspective and made one of the conditions that I'd be hired on as well before he could he would accept his involvement. So that's how I got on. Here we go. Quiet all around, please. Pictures up, slate in, and roll sound. That's me. Call it. 18 now, we'll take two. Camera. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me know. And how long have you been first ADing? Uh, professionally first AD, a little over five years. Uh, I started, I moved down here from San Francisco, I got my master's up there, and one of my associates who moved down here as well booked a first AD job for Miley Cyrus for one of her videos. He brought me on as a second AD. Uh, the director, or the producers liked him, but they didn't want to bring him back, so they brought me back instead, and they started bringing me back over and over again, recommending me to other producers, and that's kind of the history of everything. That's the history of my career. I just got recommended and recommended and recommended, and just kind of spired, spider webbed out from there. And as a first AD, what is your, from the minute you get on set, like what's your responsibility? What are you looking for at all times? Uh, no dead time. I mean, fundamentally you're trying to get the greatest amount of quality footage in the can for the director and the production at any given time. And what usually happens on a lot of sets, especially if you don't have a strong first, is that downtime where people are ready to work, but no one's telling them to work. No one's telling them to go there or do that. Uh, it almost in some ways feels like uh, babysitting and I don't want to like put down other departments it's not like that but people are waiting to do their jobs if you don't have a foreman like on a construction site waiting to tell them okay guys you need to go in and do this you need to come out so they can go in and do this then no one knows what to do and it's a lot of people milling around so for me as soon as we're in as soon as that clock hits seven o'clock or eight o'clock whatever time your call time is it's immediately getting every department working on something uh, an ideal schedule or an ideal world has every department constantly working, whether it's on the scene that we're shooting currently, prepping the next scene, wrapping out the previous scene, uh, any elements like that that we can do. If we have a, a B camera that's not shooting because of the setup in this particular scene, then let's get B camera to go outside and get B roll. Let's get the house, let's get the cars, let's get the sunset, let's get something. But if people are sitting around doing nothing, then that becomes an issue that should be rectified in an ideal world. Watch your ears real quick. Nine minutes, guys. Nine minute warning. Okay. Here we go. Are we coming in? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to call it. So this is an epic. Pictures up. This is just happening. Quiet all around. Okay. Okay. From the top, just continue. It's We're going to try it, see if we get some magic. Slate in. Roll sound. Rolling. Call it. Sounds speed. Scene 21, Apple, take one. Camera. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Camera. Excuse. Mark it. So as a first AD, you're, you're almost never resting while on Like it sounds like you're, you're always looking at for the next step and, and doing two things at once, it sounds like. Yeah, as, I mean, as a first AD, if you're resting, I'm not sure you're working. I just don't know how that works. Uh, look, on your bigger budget stuff where you have a second AD, a second second, uh, multiple second seconds, a key PA and a PA, when you have all these personnel and all these resources at your disposal, sure, you can step off set, relax if you smoke, have a cigarette, whatever the case may be. But if you're working in the, let's say, under 250000 budget range, you just don't have the personnel underneath you to support you in that kind of way. And in order to keep the film moving at a pace that usually, again, at those budget levels, it needs to move, you have to be on 
at all times. I, you, know, you don't step offset. You step offset to 10-1, use the restroom. Uh, you step offset to 10-1, grab a bottle of water and come back. And theoretically, if you've got a PA, you radio them, they get you the water. Because every second you step off is a second that someone may not be working or things may not be moving forward. Those seconds add up over the course of a day and certainly over the course of a long shoot. And what they add up to is shots you didn't get, setups you couldn't grab, performances that couldn't be tweaked because you didn't have time. And that time gets lost, yes, because other people weren't doing their jobs, but fundamentally it's because you weren't there to supervise them and have them continue to work through that. Let me emphasize that. These are your marks, right? These are your marks. Let's not wander. Let's not waddle. Let's stay where we are. Harry's the only one who's going to pivot from the stove to where he is. Uh, camera, we got a sharp. Challenges for a first AD on set and how you work around it. <laughs> uh, challenges for a first AD on set and how to work around it. Uh, well, that's, that's the challenge in and of itself is to answer that question. Each film set inherently comes with its own variables and its own issues. Uh, it'd be very easy to be like, oh, well, the problems are X, Y, and Z, and this is how you solve them. Unfortunately, that's not the situation, certainly in this industry, but uh, specifically as a first AD. You have to first and foremost evaluate what your resources are, and resources refer to not only just what you physically have, but your personnel as well. Do I have five people or do I have one? Uh, that's going to change how the problems that you're going to encounter and how you can solve them. Ideally, you're solving those problems before you get to them anyways, but maybe not. And then obviously the physical resources of your equipment, money, uh, the house, what time can we shoot, fighting the daylight if you're outside, all that kind of stuff. So in terms of common problems, I, mean, I think really the most common problem you're always going to run into is personality. Uh, you know, you have people with egos or not egos, people who are hard to work with or easy to work with, but they're green, they're not experienced, they want to learn. So you have to teach on set as you're going along. <clears throat> and it's really Fundamentally, it's not about being the first AD that you think you should be. It's about being the first AD that this particular production with these particular people need you to be. And I think that's a problem with a lot of people who take this position is that they come in with a very, they know the rules, they know the regulations, they know how to do the job, but they approach every job the same. And in doing so, you can't fit a square peg into a round hole. You have to be malleable yourself, take those first few days to figure out what this needs and how to work with people. And if you can do that and adapt quickly and efficiently, then hopefully you minimize those problems that you're talking about. For you, when you first step on, let's suppose you're gonna have a 17 day shoot. At what point do you find that you get this to this gut level of like, oh, okay, I think this is where the issues are going to be. Not, not specific people maybe, maybe not, but like where do you get the temperament of the set? When does it start to like reveal itself to you? I think by day two. I think if you're really paying attention, probably really honestly by lunch on day one. Because it's very easy to see, okay, so he's got a chip on his shoulder and he doesn't communicate well and she, you know, <laughs> like you can really kind of get that pretty quickly. Uh -huh. uh, but if you haven't figured it out by day two, then you're not going to figure it out. I mean, it's just at that point it should have revealed itself. Now in a 17 day shoot, if you're moving from location to location, maybe new problems arise in that sense where, okay, we're in this location but this location's super strict. They want padding down on the floor, they want layout board and ram board, and they want this and that and the other. So you have to discover those problems and then change and acclimate to them extremely fast because you don't have the two days previously to kind of build up to it and work out a scheme or a plan to make it work. Uh, so that's the biggest thing. Otherwise, yeah, I'd, if you're paying attention, if you're on set and you're working with people and you're listening and you're communicating, I think you find out by the end of the first day, really, no later than the end of the second. I get the sense that you're really good at reading people, that you just have this like innate thing where you can just figure out what someone needs, where they need to be led. Am I right with that? Or yeah, you have I mean, a really quick sense with that? I think I, I think I have a really quick sense to read people. Uh, I think it makes me as valuable and as good at the job as I am. I hope it does. Mm -hmm. uh, I think without that, it becomes much more difficult to do the job as effectively as I want to and I, I strive to do it. Sure. All right, let's try one, guys. Uh, obviously Chuck has total control here to say stop, cut, whatever the case may be. Let's go to ones, watch the lights, watch the reflections. Are we uh, taking a Sean, here or are we going yes. back there? I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off. We start from, we start just right starting here. from right here. Start okay. Guys, let me have you clear over to this side just to be okay. safe that we don't come over since I'm swinging all over the world. Is that a good thing? Uh, no, you're okay, Justin. Thank you. Yep. Alright, let's try it. Camera's going up, picture's up. So we're on the set of Deadly Reunion. And this is day eight of... Day eight of eight. Eight of eight, okay. And you've been in this one location. What have been some of the challenges uh, here at this location and how have you been working through it and also the script changes? Location simple enough. I mean, you, it's a dual-edged coin, right? Like you get challenges and you get benefits from being in one location. 
Uh, the benefits being no location moves, you don't have to wrap out, which takes time. Every time you do that, you're taking time away from shooting, time away from shooting. Because we're living here, all the gears here, everything's constant, it's very easy to come in at the top of the day, have a 7 a.m. call, be shooting by 8. Everything's here. And if you end the previous day correctly, then you can already be lit, pre-art-decked like art decked and pre-blocked and all that for the following day. So you come and you get right to work. So that's the benefits. The problem is you're in one location for a long time. Uh, from a aesthetic point, uh, directorially speaking, aesthetically, you don't have a lot of variety in your visual aesthetic, which can bore the audience. Uh, now, that's, that's the director and me talking, but you get the idea. Uh, from a practical standpoint as an AD, we're really on top of each other. You know, there's gear here. You don't have a lot of room to maneuver. This isn't a mansion, it's a house. So it's very congested. And it's a matter of efficiently having the departments work around each other. So having Griffin Electric come in, having them come out, and then having art go in. If everyone just tries to cluster in to do their jobs at the same time, you have a mess and everything goes slower. The way to do it efficiently is to make sure that certain departments have the floor at certain times to make it work in the, the quickest way possible. Uh, now as for scheduling and the script changes, uh, so there was a day one rewrite, which is, is fine if it's a partial rewrite or a scene rewrite. This was a uh, full rewrite of the script during that was decided to be done on day one of photography, of day one of shooting. So we shot, we sat, uh, shut down uh, half day early, the rewrite started. So as an AD, what becomes uh, extremely problematic uh, and extremely challenging is how do I schedule the rest of the shoot? How do you schedule a film that you don't know what's about to take place? Theoretically, I would have a breakdown. I know everything that goes on in every scene. I know what props I need, what wardrobe changes, what special effects, and I have everything blocked out in certain ways to shoot it, again, efficiently. Uh, in this situation, I didn't have that. So the beginning of production was challenging and stressful, I think, for a lot of, especially the department heads and camera, grip and electric, in that usually you'd shoot out all the scenes in the living room and then all the scenes in the bathroom and you'd just be done with that room and you'd move on. Because we were getting pages the morning of, we were pretty much shooting in chronological order. Just living room to bathroom, back to living room, back to here. Because I never knew what was coming next. And I didn't have time, director didn't have time, no one had time to really break things down and look at it. We just had to grab them and go. Uh, what the, the challenge there becomes is, is the morale. That's really the challenge. Because no one wants to go back and we're going back to the living room again for the same lighting setup that we just had. Okay, and you just you can just feel that morale drown. And once that starts to go down, you feel the energy dip. When the energy dips, everything moves slower. Even people are trying to do their jobs, they just don't have the passion for it. So it's really the passion. I'm checking my time. Sorry, guys. Five minutes, guys. Five minute warning. Uh, so your the passion dips and everything moves slower. You don't get as much footage in the can. You don't get as much quality out of your personnel. What was nice is that we had already scheduled a, a three day break in the middle of week one and week two. So during that three day break, the uh, screenwriter who was doing the revisions was able to get a good chunk of pages out. Now that first week, what I was doing was going home, seeing what few pages I had, four or five, and trying to plan some kind of game plan, whatever it might be, and get something out. Uh, and that worked, you know, to a, to a level it worked as much as it could. Uh, but th now, on the last day of that break, I got 15, 20 pages. So there I could actually <clears throat> schedule a day or two ahead and actually group some things together and block shoot some scenes. Uh, so that became much more accessible, much more tackle tackleable, able to be tackled, there you go, much more able to be tackled uh, than it had previously, which is where we are now uh, at this point in, on day eight. The last three days I've been able to run more like a, a legitimately planned set, if you will, than flying by the cuff of our pants like we had been. And I understand some people, actors, whatever, are not aware of who's dying, when, and they're maybe surprised. Right. Well, the original certain, uh -huh. script, uh, in the original script, nobody really died, per se. Hmm. The characters might have left the scene for a while and this and the other, but for the most part, they all lived through it. One character died toward the end, but everyone was really in the whole thing. Uh, during that day one rewrite conversation, it was decided that some of these characters would die to up the drama, up the tension. Uh, in doing so, everyone's like, yeah, we're okay with that. But then, I don't think anyone thinks that they're going to be the first to die until they are. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I die in page 15? Like, I want to be in the movie. Uh, so that's, that's the situation. Yeah, you know, we had actors coming in, looking over the pages in the morning, going, holy, this is what happens today? Or I die today? Or whatever it may be. Uh, and we were doing the same thing for the most part as well. <laughs> Just reading them and going, wow, this is, this is going to be a fun day. 
so yeah, they didn't know what was coming. The tough part about that for budgeting time and structuring things like that is usually I can look at something and go, okay, this is a massive fight scene. And maybe it only says it's one eighth of a page total on the script, but I know it's gonna be four hours of shooting to get it. Without having the time to pre do that pre-production work and really break down the script, I'm left with guessing at how much time certain things should take strictly based on my previous experience, uh, which has actually worked out pretty well, but also could have been a catastrophe.